welcome back to Trashy Trashy. I'm Erica, your host. And I'm Cassandra Cardenas, your other host. Welcome. This is a podcast that takes a dumpster dive on garbage people and trashy news stories. Cass, why are you trash this week? So if you follow me on Instagram, which I hope you do, at Cass Cardenas, maybe you're getting a little insight to the fact that I've been renovating my apartment. Renovating your apartment? How can you do that? Well, because I'm a piece of trash, and literally this week, this sentence came out of my mouth. I don't give a fuck about no deposit. So (laughs) I have been, I, I, I think I've been going into like what I would call dad mode, although I don't know because I didn't have a father like this and also like didn't really have a father because he died when I was a kid. But like, you know, like when people's like dads like seem to know everything, you know, or like know how to do everything. Like, I feel like that's what I'm doing. Like I took down, I ripped down a medicine cabinet. I ripped down like a whole other like bathroom cabinet fixture. I took down the door because I was like, nah, these hinges are gross. I'll buy new hinges. I am, I've been purchasing tools. We went to Lowe's to get this paint that we painted the bathroom, painted the bathroom pink. And I was like, I need pliers. Like I just, (laughs) I've been becoming like major, major like tool girl. And like what I assume, I think I'm going full trash dad mode. You are full daddy. Yeah, I'm going full daddy and and I'm single. So <laughs> I love to see it. Yeah. Uh, why are you trash this week, Erica? Uh, one time I was visiting a friend she was doing where she was interning for like a congressman and it was a conservative congressperson and it was, you know, 1205 time to take the birth control pill. Yep. So while touring a very conservative member of Congress's office. I just opened up my birth control pack and popped a pill while everyone stared at me. And I was like, it's time for, it's 12.05. Oh, I forgot that you were completely opposed to this and that I should have no autonomy. You might as well have just had an abortion like on the floor. Like a powwow abortion on the floor. No kidding. That's so funny. Uh, We also have a listener trash this week love to see it coming at you from denver colorado i am trash because i took my mask off to try on glasses i'm so stupid i didn't even realize until she walked away here's why i like this is because i did the same fucking thing uh three weeks ago i bought new two new pairs of glasses i just didn't i wasn't thinking like i just kind of i i took the mask off because i was like i gotta see my face But then I was immediately like, oh, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. And the woman was like, she's like, you just pull it down for a second and just don't face me. And I was like, okay. it's. I mean, this is, it's just one of those things that like you don't think about because you got to see what you look like with your new glasses. I, I, yeah, it's not a problem I have. I only wear blue blockers, blue blocker glasses. You think you're better than me? Yeah, I've got better (laughs) eyesight. (laughs) Fucking bitch. Wow. (laughs) That's all right. Can't relate. Speaking of yeah. not being able to relate, oh, let's gosh. get into this week's first story. Yes. So from Facebook, which as a thing I deleted for not being a reliable source of anything, in my opinion. However, uh, this is where this story is. I could have Googled to find it elsewhere, but I didn't because I'm trash. A Brazilian evangelical gospel singer and congresswoman named Flor Delis. Mm-hmm. Well, she's in jail now. Uh, along with her biological daughter and two other children for domestic abuse, human trafficking, and being caught hiring a hitman to murder one of her other children, Anderson de Carmo. Would you like to give some backstory on this woman, Erica? Yes, she has three biological children, five adopted, aka the A-kids, and then she adopted 50 more children, and they were the B-kids. 50. This woman has 50. Five adopted kids and three biological kids. Teenagers, right? She she adopts at least the A kids. I know she adopted them all as teenagers. Mm-hmm. These uh, the B kids were allegedly treated terribly and written with psalms and blood and sleep with Floridas in order to complete the purification process. A kids lived a pretty good life. Yeah, they had to like write the psalms in their own blood, which it would be bad for someone like me who's incredibly unfamiliar with the Bible. I'm sure materials were provided. <laughs> you think? Not like pens, but source material was provided. This woman, Florida Lee, was like a Brazilian fucking superstar, evangelical, like saint, 
person. They had in 2009, there was a big budget film made about her with like really famous Brazilian actors. And all of the proceeds of the movie went to her along with the actors, some of the actors at least, refusing payment because they were like, no, 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 this woman deserves it. She has 55 adopted children and she's like a woman of God. She was viewed as like a saint. So the one that she tried to, or so the one that she did murder, Anderson DeCarmo, he dated one of her biological daughters, Simone, when they were teenagers. So that's like some, it's not incest because they weren't related. So like, okay, that's fine. It's a little weird, but it's fine. But then she dumped, or no, but then he dumped Simone and then decided to go on and date and marry fucking Mama Florida. Let me ask you something, Erica. Has, did your high school sweetheart ever go on to marry and uh, fuck your mom? No, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, mine either. He also wasn't like definitely like part-time my brother either. So (sighs) it's nice and weird. Anyways, so fast forward to like, I guess a couple years ago, this Anderson DeCarmo living the life, married to his adopted mother, whatever. He's like, nah, I want a divorce. Probably because this is fucking weird. Because we can't forget that there are 50 kids living in like, you know, I don't I don't know. I imagine them all in a warehouse writing in their own blood. I have no idea. I feel like it's crazy. This story is so crazy that they're not even focusing on the 50 other kids. No, the and B like spot that? is like ignored, basically. Yeah, they're ignored by this story and also by these people. But so Anderson's like, I want a divorce. And Florida Lee's like, no, the fuck you don't. Because they would, he would end up with half of everything. So it would go half to this Anderson to Carmo and then half to Florida Lee and all the fucking kids. So she wanted to maintain an image as a perfect congresswoman, evangelical superstar and wife. And divorce doesn't look good. Yeah. But I mean, it's cool if you marry one of your adopted sons. That's like totally fine for your image. But no, you cannot said then divorce adopted son. So her and her daughter tried to fucking poison him. Multiple times. And then they kept fucking it up. They accidentally poisoned a bunch of the other adopted children. Nobody had died. <laughs> it's fucking forgotten B squad. Oh, I shouldn't be laughing. It's just funny. I feel so bad for the B squad. They're not even part of the story, but they're my story. They're... They're not even named, like not one named in this no. article. No, but uh, so they they accidentally poisoned a bunch of the kids. Like you said, nobody died. And then later in that year, Anderson DeCarmo was robbed and murdered. And, and then that was it until most recently when it came out that this Florida Lees had hired a hitman to kill him. So um, now she, Simone, and two of the others are they're in jail. This would be the equivalent of what? Who going to jail? Like Angelina Jolie? I thought about Angelina Jolie when I was reading the beginning, except for the dip. The, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Or like, I was thinking about Angelina Jolie or I was thinking about like the Octomom. But the Octomom, those were all of her kids. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying like um, famous person equivalency, like somebody so huge hiring a hitman and marrying. Well, someone so huge in politics and also the evangelical church, I'm looking at like a Mike Pence. But like I'm a little biased because if Mike Pence went to jail, I would be like ecstatic. I don't think Mike Pence could handle prison. I'm not sure that this Florida Lee can either, but maybe. Maybe. I I think she's She's like a cult leader. Cult leaders do well in prison, don't they? Yeah, she's got a ruthless side to her. I think she'll be just fine. And I'm not fucking calling evangelical church a cult. I'm saying her and her fucking blood psalms is kind of culty relax listeners my evangelical listeners <laughs> yeah please save your emails we totally understand we know i mean am i wrong to say like hashtag goals i mean this story is like a movie in the making i mean it was a movie in 2009 it's just not with all the bad stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> We'll link to this article so that you can read more about it and understand the gravity of like her celebrity. It's one of those things where it's not an article. It's like multiple like posts on Facebook. And so it's kind of, again, like I said, I deleted Facebook because I don't like Facebook and I could have fact checked this more, but I just chose to just believe it. And also the comments, there's a lot of people doing a lot of very great memes in these comments. And that was like, 
that really kept me riveted. Speaking of riveting, I find sports to be riveting. You're being sarcastic. No, I've I'm actually quarantine has turned me into a sports fan. I've watched almost all of the NBA playoffs. Really? True story. Mm. I'm missing football right now to you know, to talk to you. So Oh my god, that's a sacrifice and thank you so much. No, you're welcome. Just kidding. It's fine. So according to the businessinsider.com, United Airlines is being sued right now because they've been staffing the uh, charter planes that uh, carry you know, you know, the NFL players, MLB players, NCAA, NCAA players, you know, sports athletes. They, uh, they employ those with young blonde crews. Hot blonde, hot blonde flight attendants. The two flight attendants, which Bloomberg identifies as a black woman and a Jewish woman who have worked for United for over 28 years and said that they could not work on chartered flights because they were not on the preferred list. Yes. The complaint from these women says that young white blonde flight attendants with less experience were able to work the flights in a, in an example of the airline valuing employees based entirely on their racial and physical attributes and stereotype stereotypical notions of sexual allure so i mean these were hooters planes yeah this is garbage united yeah this sucks because it's like there's a couple things wrong with this it's it's like the abercrombie and fitch of of flights in the sense that they only hire attractive people which is rude but then on the other hand it's also like you're hiring attractive people to keep these athletes happy but like is this the fucking 50s what do you mean it, you're basically sending these blonde flight attendants up to be like yeah the athletes are gonna have more fun harassing you so you go on there it's like i I just feel like you're giving almost permission you know it's like that doesn't make fucking sense i mean i would like some of this treatment i would like for my flights to be staffed with non-funny like my (laughs) my preferred my preferred list is non-funny flight attendants. I want them at the top of their game. I want them completely competent. And then I want them to slip me an extra slider of, of alcohol if I ask for it. Like that's You gotta my- stop flying Southwest because yeah. that's where all the funny ones go. It's true. It's like a sorting hat at the beginning where they <laughs> sort them into comedy flight attendants. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. I don't know why I hate a funny flight. Like I shouldn't because it's like they're just trying to like have a good time at work. I mean, because they're and I mean this with the utmost respect. And I, I'm just saying this because my brother was a flight attendant for a long time. This is being a waiter in the sky. You know, a waiter in the sky who gets the same treatment as waiters, sometimes worse treatment than waiters because you're dealing with people who are either nervous about flying or they're just cramped and they're uncomfortable or like a whole bunch of, they might've had a really bad time at the airport. There's a lot of reasons why people are in a bad mood on the plane. So you're basically a waiter dealing with the angriest people who also in times of crisis needs to be part of the team that saves everybody. (laughs) Exactly. They've got to have so much safety training. So like a flight attendant is not an easy job. And so for one to go up and tell jokes when you're trying to tell me the safety features, maybe I should be more compassionate, but all I want is for them to just shut up. Please don't tell your fucking jokes. It's 6 a.m. and I'm going to fly so I can fucking like deal with a rental car and then go and deal with like family or go and deal with whatever the fuck I'm traveling with. And like, just shut the fuck up. Can I just tell me things? Where are the fucking exits? Yeah. Where are the exits? How do I buckle my safety seat in? That's all I want to know. You don't to tell deal with me, about- with me in the case of a water landing. There's no water landing. There are. You don't want to know where your life vest is. I, I don't know if I want to hang out in the ocean for that long. You're just going to give up. I'm just going to give up. Like, my will to live has shrunk significantly the older I get. I always think about my laptop in the in case of water landing. I'm like, in case of water landing, I am so screwed. Like, I, I, if water landing was an option, I shouldn't have brought this on the flight. I don't know. Flight attendants, of course, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're a funny flight attendant, like, please live your life, of course. But, like, I do agree with you, Erica. I like a... I like a friendly flight attendant. I don't like a mean one. A friendly, efficient, stealthy flight attendant. This yeah. is the right one. I like when I fly international, I like being at the the, the middle mm-hmm. of a flight that's close to where their station is uh-huh. so that I can go and ask for more wine. 
Oh, yeah, because they'll give it to you. They'll well, give international it flights, I think the booze is free anyways, depending on where you're going. Yeah. I, I just like to be able to go to them. I don't want them to have to wait to come to me. I I agree with you. I flew, when I was flying to Paris with my ex, we were near the middle of the plane. And I kind of felt like, I felt like there was like a party happening that I wasn't invited to because we were flying Air France and all the flight attendants were, you know, like bilingual. That's the other thing. You're a waiter. <laughs> like a lot of the times you'd be bilingual. Like we need to pay flight attendants a lot of money. But like they, so they're, most of them speak French though. And there was a lot of people on the flight that were speaking French. And so I was very close to that middle section and I could hear kind of like, you know, four or five like French people and like the flight attendants, like all kind of kicking it and like having a little party back there. And I was like, I want to have a party, but I don't speak French. So I guess I'm just fucking chop liver over here and I will fucking die and I'll watch the hangover again. And I was like kind of being a baby about it. It's a hundred percent my fault for not being able to speak French, but I was being a baby about it. I ordered uh, from Saucy, which is an alcohol delivery app, and they do not mm-hmm. sponsor the podcast. But I wish I they would, though. Woo! Wish they would. Yeah, give us those discount codes, Saucy. I that ordered a good one. We should chase that. We should chase it. I ordered Friday night enough that it looked like I was having a party, but when I came out to get it solo. The driver was like, I was like, hello, you know, thank you so much. And he's like, oh, no habla in, you know, don't speak English. So I was like, okay, well, you know, gracias, thank you. And he said, all for you? (laughs) This much alcohol is just for you? And I was like, yes, yes, it is. Okay, you can't say that you don't speak English and then lay on some fucking judgment. That's not fair. And then layered it, sprinkled on some judgment, like, this all for you? And I was like, yes. And he was going to help me carry it. And I was like, no, no, I got it. I got it. But I was like, I like how this man was like, I don't want any small talk until he thought I was single. And then he was like, so boyfriend? And I was like, I got to go. Man, that must have cost a fortune ordering a party amount of booze from Saucy. Uh, It was it was reasonable. A a party was like I had a bad Friday night. So I was like, it's time for a solo party. Time for an Erica party. I get it. Yeah. Speaking of uh, having a bad night. (laughs) Okay, that's good too. Jason Ravensborg, a 44-year-old man, a 44-year-old district attorney. No, a a, a fucking Don't cut this. I'm going to get through it. Jason Ravensborg, a 44-year-old attorney general in South Dakota, reported hitting a deer on Saturday night near Highmore, but actually struck a pedestrian whose body wasn't discovered until the next morning. Yeah, the pedestrian was later identified as Joe Beaver, a 55-year-old man from Highmore. So here's what's wild about this. I'm just going to, like, go into my thoughts. The the brother, the, the, this guy who got hit, his cousins are, like, these two, like, farmer brothers and are immediately diving into, like, the conspiracy that because he was struck by this like Republican attorney general that like his that their cousin's like death is not going to be properly dealt with. And I can't say that they're wrong. Well, the yeah, the the de- Department of Public Safety has been hiding a lot of information and shying away from answering any questions. When did Ravenborg Ravensborg contact the Hyde County Sheriff to report hitting the deer? Did he get drug tested? Whether he got out and looked? Yeah, it's it was interesting. They said in this article that most of the time when people hit a deer, they call the police and they always usually check their car for damage. And I was like, man, I've never, thankfully, I've never hit a hit a deer before i don't know if i would think to call the police is that crazy uh no i've i've been around people that have hit deers like you i mean you might call the game warden i wouldn't where is his number i mean if you're a district attorney i think you could have the game warden's number within like okay one but phone i'm talking call. about like me i'm talking about me cassandra i hit a deer i mean i would go check the damage in my car probably mm-hmm. but like I, I don't know if i would be like i better call the cops about this deer you know unless my car wasn't i don't, I don't know it did it uh, Maybe it would be different if I lived anywhere where I could possibly even hit a deer. (laughs) I think the closest deer I might be able to hit is if I was like driving through the hills of Burbank. Sure. Which is very rural with horses and deer. And deer for those that are not native to LA. 
Sure, yeah, I should have uh, clarified. But they didn't know also if law enforcement even showed up to look for the deer, Mm -hmm. which I didn't know that they would do. We don't know if Ravensburg was driving a personal or state-owned vehicle. We don't know if he made it home on Saturday night. We don't know where and when the victim was found on Sunday. They don't know shit about this. Or rather... They're not releasing shit about this. Yeah, it looks like it's it it appears from here to be allegedly a cover up. I mean, I really God, I wish we could trust the government. I don't trust a lot of local government because of this like good old boy network. Ooh, dive into that. You want to take care of your buddies, you know, because you know that if something happens like this to you, somebody would take care of you. I mean, that's terrifying. That reminds me of did you ever listen to that podcast Shit Town or S Town? S-Town, yeah. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that whole vibe of just these big, like, huge conspiracies to protect each other. And, like, (laughs) I don't know. This is, like, what makes, like, small town life, like, incredibly unappealing to me amongst other reasons. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, or I just watched uh, the movie The Devil All the Time. And it's, like, it's this shit, too, where it's, like, everybody kind of knows each other. And, like, or the, you know, like, the main family, they're, like, they'd lived there for nine years and were still treated as outsiders. It's, like, I don't fucking like that. I don't yeah. want that. It sucks because there's now a man who's dead and some, like, fucking attorney general who was leaving a Republican event. I don't know why I keep uh, pressing on that, but it's important to me. And just fucking killed a guy. I mean, it could have all been just a horrible accident, but I don't understand how you get a person and a deer confused. What if he thought it was Bigfoot? Okay, now here's something we should talk about. Was it? Hell Yeah. Was it a Bigfoot? (laughs) Yeah. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Do I believe in Bigfoot? I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't exist. What about- But I don't know. Like, what is a Bigfoot? Uh, Bigfoot, I think, is like a missing link between the evolution of- Okay, well, that's not helpful. (laughs) Then no, I don't think it exists. You don't think that there's like a breed of almost humans that are still basically big mammals. But how would we not find them by now? I think they bury their dead. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I think it's I think like that the Bigfoots are out there. Bar- they're smart enough to know that they can't be found. Yeah. But they're not fully. For- oh, please. They're not fully human, but I think that they take care of themselves enough to where they know that they're hunted in some way. I think they're smart. I don't know. I I really, in my head, I'm like, I think that the existence of people who might just like let themselves go and live in the forest and wander around, you know, like animals, I think that that is very possible. But to say that there is an actual like unevolved version of human that wanders through the forest. No, I don't think that there's a Bigfoot. All right. I mean, we discover new species like every day. Where do the Bigfoots live? Here in America? I think there might be some in like the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. See, that's where the vampires are too. Uh Uh-uh. I don't buy it. Pacific Northwest is not as mysterious as people try to make it sound. There's just a lot of trees. I said it. Fuck you. All right. Not fuck you, Erica. Never fuck you. I'm just saying fuck you to everyone else. To Bigfoot conspiracy theorist? I mean, I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I just like, even the little bit of information that you gave me, I've debunked it in my mind. Even like the people of the tundra, like think about the giant, like the steppe of like Mongolia. Like how much of that is unlike civilized land or just, you know, the Yeti. And like, how is it that all these cultures have this myth about the undiscovered person? I don't know. I, I, I don't even know what all that stuff, what all those words that you said meant. Fair enough. I don't know about the undiscovered steppe in Mongolia and the Yeti. The Yeti is a type of beer to me from Great Divide. Okay. But it's based on something. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, everyone also has their own version of Santa Claus. That's true, and he we know he's real. <laughs> yep, you're right. You're right, uh, you're right. I actually proved your point. So, from Consequences of Sound, Erica's favorite website. Good old J.K. Rowling, the queen of the cunts, ha- is coming out with a new book under a pseudonym, and uh, the villain of this new book is a male serial killer who wears dresses. <sighs> <sighs> Man, she has, like, can someone check on her? Like, what is up? She's fucking going ape shit. I just don't understand her. (laughs) I mean, I've said that before and it's so simplistic. But the article calls her a transphobic bigot, (laughs) 
which is yeah because she fucking is a hundred percent accurate she released a book called troubled blood and the not so subtle plot involves a cis male serial killer who dresses as a woman to get close to his female victims never trust a man that wears dresses is what it says and it's like or that's the moral of it is never trust a man in a dress it's like you know what it is is that like i'm not under the impression that she's the only transphobic person out there i'm aware that there are a lot more Mm -hmm. i think it's more just like why won't she just relax no she's like like, she's so fucking famous she doesn't need to work ever again she's quadrupled down she's she's doubled she's tripled she's quadrupled down on this uh, this shitty opinion this trash opinion about trans women (laughs) I just she's she's lost like all the respect from like anyone she's ever worked with. Yeah. And and then the actor who played Hagrid came out and agreed with her. Oh. No. Yeah. Who's who's asking him? No one. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, all the ones that people actually give a shit about. The actor who played Hagrid, of course. Of course. Look, she uh she's a major cunt. I don't like her. I don't even like you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop calling her a cunt. Because I like that word and I don't think she deserves it. I'm gonna give her another word now. What should I call her? I a don't transphobic know. bigot? Yeah, transphobic bigot is like all we ever need to identify her as ever again. Great. There you go. You heard it here. You know, <laughs> I get upset just about the fact that there's gonna have to be reporters who are gonna have to read the book. To give us even more like hot goss on how bad it is. But it's kind of like, what if we don't even talk about it? I, I just want to ignore it. Like, I just don't have the care in me to, 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 yeah. I just say ignore it. Speaking of killing women, Real Housewife of. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Real Housewife of Beverly Hills, Teddy Mellencamp, who. <laughs> Let's take that again. <laughs> Good one. No, keep it. Keep it. It's fucking funny. Uh, Speaking of uh. killing women, according to MF- <laughs> MSN.com, Teddy Mellencamp of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, all in business, was disclosed all over the internet this week. Yeah. So this is obviously your territory because I don't watch these shows, but it looks like this uh, All In by Teddy is a, is a dieting program that comes with a two-week jumpstart, a monthly program, and then a weight and workout plan. This is essentially starvation. Starving yourself, yeah. The program is about 500 calories a day. You have to text your upline every day, your accountability coach that you pay for, and show them that you've done an hour of cardio and then text them what you've eaten that day with video or photos. Calories come to about 500 calories a day with plus an hour of cardio. They it cost approximately the jump start cost $599. The monthly program is $399. The weight and workout plan is $165 per month, and the maintenance plan totals for $95 a month. They also have a postpartum program that costs $525 a month. Do not offer any refunds. If you drink alcohol, you are kicked out of the program with no refund. This policy, it gives a level of accountability and motivation to, quote, Go all in. I mean, this is bananas. And I, have you been watching The Vow? I think I talked about it on this podcast. Yes. So this sounds like DOS, bro. This is like the cult kind of shit where they're trying to, you know, it. They, it's, it's posed as accountability when it's really like, it's just so intense. Like, there's no fucking way. Different bodies need different things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what works for me might not work for you, might not work for, you know, a friend, might not work for anybody. So just to blanket statement, say you're going to eat this many calories a day and then you're going to do this much exercise a day and then boom, you're thin. No, the fuck you're not. Like when I think about the idea of doing an hour of cardio a day, knowing that like my only remaining calories are like four to five hundred, like I got nauseous. As you were saying that, because I just like, it's just dangerous. This is so fucking dangerous. And in my opinion, this is an example of a celebrity using their name to promote shit that is not fucking safe. 
And Teddy has almost no certifications. Like the 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 certification that she has is an online course that costs like six hundred dollars that you can get sitting on your couch. So she's not a registered dietitian. She's not a fitness. You know, she's just somebody that's using her platform to basically starve women. This is like this is the, the Kardashians making money on fucking diuretic tea or like you know whatever the fuck it is like. Is this woman ready to take responsibility when, you know, like young women stop having their periods because they're starving themselves or their hair starts falling out or someone dies because you're basically like taking hundreds of dollars from someone and then in a show of accountability, never giving them a refund and then forcing them to become anorexic. Like, I don't it's like fucking this is so fucked. And this is just like the obsession with like beauty and all of these things. I'm telling you right now on Trashy Trashy Podcast, your favorite influencer probably doesn't know what's right for you ever. No, no. You know who does? Doctors and dietitians. And you, you know what's right for you. Yeah, I get it. I've done I've done fad diets. I've done the whole thing. I know what works for my body. I know what doesn't. And I also know that it doesn't equate my self-worth. I mean, I think that that's a big part of it. Is it like the idea of being someone who just had a baby and then throwing $500 towards some fucking real housewife to encourage you to starve yourself so that you can get, you know, whatever your post baby body was back. It's like, why is why is this happening to women? Can't we just fucking live? Yeah, exactly. And Teddy is the most boring part of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Like she has no personality. This almost makes her interesting, but they won't talk about this part of it on the show. Of course not. I mean, cuz they probably also advertise during the commercial breaks for all kinds of weight loss shit too. This is I mean, this is a systematic problem of like what they're of how society makes women feel in general and she is just she didn't start this she is just another player in the game of hey ladies you'll never ever ever be good enough yeah she's just a cog in the machine so fuck this this is fucking trash this is hot trash. Uh, one woman said she texted her accountability coach that she was starving and they would just tell her to drink more water. I had a doctor, or I shouldn't say I had a doctor. My mom had a doctor because my mom was overweight. And the doctor, do I want to say doctor? I don't think he was a real doctor. I think he was some sort of kind of like kooky, like dietitian. But he said to remember, like, she would drink water instead of eat if she was hungry. And like the whole science behind it, he said, just think about how much fun you're having losing weight. Oh, that's Like when you're starving and you're drinking hot water, go, "Mm, this is so fun. I love this such trash yeah it's bad it's it's really like it's upsetting yeah everyone is beautiful if you're listening to trash trash podcast you're great the way you are do anything that you want that'll make you feel better but no one no one no one is allowed to tell you that you need to change thank you so much like the society that the pressure especially on women it's just bad it's just garbage like i don't have any articulate way of saying this i just feel awful that we're put into this culture where we're constantly told we're not good enough no matter what you look like i just i yeah i feel the same way i don't i i hate that people profit on putting women in danger yeah teddy Mellencamp, you're garbage you fucking suck bitch speaking of someone who fucking sucks according to adn.com there's a dentist in Anchorage, Alaska, who has just been arrested and sentenced to 12 years in prison for charges including Medicaid fraud, endangerment to patients, and well, I mean, this isn't the technical term, but extracting teeth while on a hoverboard. Oh, he rode a hoverboard while he was extracting a patient's tooth. Just for goof, you know, just for fun. Just for There's funny. A phone footage, probably taken by one of his employees, of like him just like over someone's unconscious body, like fucking taking the tooth out and then riding around the halls on his sweet hoverboard. And you look at the picture of this guy and you're like, yeah, that guy would do that. It's like some white guy named Sean or Seth. Oh, Seth. Seth. Yeah. Seth Lookhart. Seth. Yeah. Is the dentist in question. So he also was accused of putting patients under for way too long, mm-hmm. frequent, like sedating them for extended periods of time and nearly killed several of those patients as well. 
Yeah, because apparently, so if you have Medicaid and stuff, there you're not going to get charged for being sedated. And so he, rather than doing like the laughing gas or like, you know, the other kinds of things that you could do to a patient getting dental work, he would always opt for sedation and then he would charge Medicaid thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. And uh, this was like a total scam and so, so dangerous. <laughs> He's lucky he didn't kill anybody. We're all lucky he didn't kill anybody. But this guy fucking... (laughs) Enjoy prison, you loser. It makes me want to have a witness anytime I get dental work done now. Like, I trust my doctor, fancysmiles.com, the best dentist in the valley, Mm. Dr. Dr. Bernstein. Mm, uh, good plug. That's a che- that's a free plug. Look at these smiling chompers. When I had to get my wisdom teeth out, I had a lot of fear going into it. And one of the fears that I felt was, what if I get molested under when I'm under sedation? And uh-huh. now I didn't. I don't think. And that was an irrational fear. I think I was like, it was compounded with like, I was just afraid to go under in general. And I was afraid to be on all the drugs and whatever. I had a lot of fears going into that. That was just one of many. But I, you know, I mean, I think American Horror Story had just come out, come out like around the same time. And like, there was a whole like plot line about like the guy with the Dahlia or how he used to, I don't know, like in my head, I was like, this shit happens. And so I was afraid and I kind of like agree with you that I'm just like, can I elect to bring my own witness now whenever I have to get dental work? Because I mean, if it's surgery, there's a lot of people around, but I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know about these dentists. Like there's uh, a bad bad rap on dentists. They already have it hard enough. They really Nobody likes going there. They really do. And like, they have to go to dentist school. Like dentistry school is tough. They're doctors. I just don't feel like they get the respect that doctors get. No, I mean, it's, it's the whole, I think there's a, it's a joke about it. And in the same way that like fire cops don't get the same respect as firefighters. Although I guess that joke hasn't aged well, but you know, it's just, uh, nobody, nobody likes a dentist. www.fancysmiles.com. You're (laughs) looking for a dentist. I highly recommend them. I always get the warm and fuzzy from him he's a good dude i what does that mean the worm and fuzzies like i get a good feeling all right fair enough yeah uh. when i got a tooth extracted a couple years ago had had a cavity and it got into like the roots basically mm. and i had to get a tooth extracted did you have to get a root canal uh not a root canal like they fully pulled the tooth so i am toothless i i think i have one of those I got a tooth taken out and then they gave me a what was what it's called a bridge. I have been too poor to actually go back and get the rest of the dental work done. <laughs> Wait, so where? You have you're literally missing a tooth? Uh-huh. In my back left side on the top. You can't see it in my smile or anything, but I am missing a tooth. Do you touch it all the time with your tongue? Constantly. <laughs> constantly but when i was coming out of anesthesia i just remember i was trying to write a screenplay with my nurse i guess that's what i've been hallucinating about and i was like so give me your number so we can work on this and she did not like it she did not respond like oh silly she's coming out of anesthesia she's like they're privacy concerns and i can't give you my number and i was like but we were you know in my dream of under anesthesia we were writing this screenplay together so we're best friends evidently but she acted so hurt and so ridiculous i was like i'm clearly out of my mind on drugs are you sure because here's the thing you're not a reliable narrator here so was she actually really hurt or did she kind of laugh it off and go okay no she she kind of snapped at me and was like there's privacy concerns i can't give you my number and i was like what but in my, you know, anesthesia dream, we were such good friends. That's <laughs> when I did get my wisdom teeth taken out. Uh, this is, again, the same person who less than five minutes ago said I was afraid that I was going to get like assaulted under. I told the dentists, I'm pretty funny. And they're like, OK, <laughs> I don't know. How, I, I probably didn't present it that way, but I, it, it came up in conversation that I'd mentioned that I was very funny. And then they're putting the IV in my hand. And I was like, is this a bad time to tell you I have to go to the bathroom? And the two guys looked at me and they're like, what? And I was like, I told you I was funny. And then I fucking passed out. And then I woke up later, you know, 
fucking 30 minutes later or whatever and they're like okay that, that was it like you know what do you want do you need us to call you know the, your ride and i'm like no i got it that was it it's over and so then my ex showed up to pick me up and i was like baby these are the best dentists to ever happen this, i never met better dentists than this this is who we need to come to for and i hugged everyone everyone in the office the dentist the guy who did the anesthesia his assistant everybody hugged him and i'm like I think about that now and I'm like, oh, I was afraid of them touching me. And I went you know, and touched all of them. Semi molested the staff. Yep. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Speaking so, of molested, according uh, to insider.com, a Hamburg defender, soccer defender, a German football. soccer player, football, football, as they call it, jumped into the stands and attacked an opposition fan who was insulting his family, shoving them to the ground. Yeah, I mean, sports get hot. What's up with Germany? Is allowed? You're allowed to have fans in Germany? I think they're back to normal. Fuck. <laughs> They've whipped the coronavirus and they're back to normal. Well, yeah, he, uh, this guy was giving some insults against this person's wife and daughter and that defender was just like, fuck it, I'm done. And he um, beat the shit out of him. And, you know, I don't know, I'm kind of on the side of the guy who just decided to defend his family like oh controversial why i'm like shut the fuck up like if you're a, a person in the fan look i love a good heckle when i'm in a sports game but i like to heckle about things that are overall very irre irrelevant like i will heckle the opposing team and say that their goalie evades his taxes or you know that one time they adopted a dog and then gave it back like i'll make up fake shit and I will scream that from the stands. And and then eventually I get too drunk and then I have to stop because I start heckling my own team. But if you're doing like some really nasty stuff, like you're provoking these people. These are people. They're real people down there playing. This is what they do for a living. They're athletes. Like, fuck off if you're going to talk so much shit. Did you watch The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary? No, I'm not a huge basketball fan like you. Huge basketball fan here. I watched it and Michael Jordan, when he was guarding like his own players in practice, like his own teammates, he would talk so much shit to them to get them mentally prepared to play in the, in the NBA. And one of his heckles to one of his teammates was... uh. You got your cats at home. You better you better guard me. You got cats at home. Like it was just so mundane. But he just talked shit constantly to get them prepared. And that blew my mind. I mean, uh, is that the sign of a good leader or a maniac? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they're two and they're two sides of the same coin. Yeah, that's true. Well, anyway, so this guy apologized. He's like, I'm a role model. I shouldn't have done that. But I don't know. I'm on his side. I think both sides are a little bit trash. Like you have to be conditioned to to know that that's coming in and not take it personally. But at the same time, the fans shouldn't have done what they did either. That's so, fair. I see both sides of this story. No garbage here. <laughs> You're a better woman than me. Speaking of better women. This story was sent in by a listener, Jen Curcio. On Apple News, we have a, a Florida dad defending his fifth grade son for wearing a Hooters mask to school. Ian Golba, has wore, he wore the controversial mask to Sunset Park Elementary in Windermere. And uh, he got in trouble with his teacher on Tuesday. He said, I wore it. And she said it wasn't appropriate for school. I asked her why. And she said, if you really want to know why, go ask the principal. And uh, the principal said it was inappropriate because it expresses a woman's body. I now, looked at the mask. It looks like it's just the logo over and over and over it's again. It's just the logo over and over. So I don't understand. I mean, I get the symbolism behind what the logo represents, but the logo itself is not offensive. So like we got trash bottom to top here, but it's different types of trash. A, why did you use your 11 year old son have a Hooters mask? But you know what? Live your life. Live your trashy life. I'm mm -hmm. here for it. I really don't like why, when adults like um, can't answer children's questions. That's messed you know? up. You're saying it's not appropriate for school, but then you're like, as a principal, it's like, fuck you. Like, you say it. You tell him. Yeah. Like, it's, appro it's inappropriate for school because it is advertising a restaurant that makes its waitresses objectify themselves while they serve you hot wings. Like, there you go. That's all you have to say. Yeah. And it's a matter of opinion, by the way. Like, again, I do think that this is a trashy mask, but like, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 all an opinion. It's also infringing on his First Amendment rights as free speech, I think. Hello. There we go. That's all you got to do, Florida. You love your weird fucking laws. Knock, knock. It's the Constitution calling. <clears throat> it's the Bill of Rights. Are you going to answer? 
You gonna answer? What's up, school? I mean, I don't want to say it. I'm still. I brought an Eminem CD to school. Sick. In high school, and got suspended. I uh, got like in-house suspension for a couple days. And to this day, I am so like my parents fully backed the school, but I'm like, as an adult, it makes me want to sue the school. Yeah, I went to a middle school in California. Santa Clarita, California for eighth grade. And we had to wear uniforms, but your parents could opt you out of the uniforms if you want. And so I was like, mom, fucking do it. Which also like, why do you have uniforms if you can just opt out? It doesn't matter. I'll never understand. It wasn't a private school or was it? I don't know. I've never done research. So I got opted out of the re- out of the uniforms. And I was like very, very, very much into like pop punk and like being fucking punk and all these kinds of mm-hmm. things. And so Hot Topic was like my religion. So I would wear Dickies and band t-shirts all the time. And I got in trouble because I wore a corn t-shirt with like flaming swords on it, which is really embarrassing to say (laughs) that I even owned that shirt in the first place, but I fucking did. And I got in trouble for it. And I was like, why? And they're like, that's violent satanic imagery. Oh my God. Oh my God. I would have burned that school to the ground. Yeah. I was, I like, and I had like all my like cool, like punk friends, like being like, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Like, I mean, privately, they didn't do anything. And I don't even think that like, if I brought that up to my mom, I think she'd be like, did that happen? So because she didn't, I don't think she was even informed. (laughs) I think I kind of kept that on the down low that that happened because I didn't want her to like take it back and like make me wear the uniforms again. Mm -hmm. Or she probably would have agreed because I don't think she liked that shirt either. I just think it's bullshit that we police things like that in children. Yeah, let them express themselves. I needed to express myself in that corn t-shirt. You (laughs) needed to express yourself with your Eminem CD. It's the most trouble I ever got in. And I did way worse stuff as a kid, but that's the most trouble that I ever got in. And to this day, I'm like, I read about it. So I have gone back and listened. The The big Eminem album when I was in middle school was the Eminem show. Mm-hmm. And is this the album you're talking about or no? No, I believe it was Marshall Mathers. Okay, the Marshall Mathers LP. So I have gone back since and as an adult and listened to the Eminem show. And I have some notes. Oh, boy. Are you listening, <laughs> Eminem? Yeah. Look, this stuff is not very like, what's the word I'm looking for where it ages badly or like ages in general and you don't want it to age? Mm -hmm. What's the word? Do you know? Canon? No, not canon. No. Evergreen. It is not, this, this music is not evergreen. Like if you, if I was like, hey, you know, my hypothetical child that I have, would you like to listen to what I listened to in middle school? It's a, like, you know, All of this has aged badly for a lot of reasons, such as beating women, homophobia, uh, etc. But also, really what stood out to me is everything is about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky and Dick Cheney and all these people who are just not relevant anymore. And it's like, come on, like, write some more evergreen music so that it becomes a little bit more timeless. Mm -hmm. Those are just my notes, you know. I don't know if you have any notes for Eminem while he's listening. No, sir, you're perfect. I I w- I went to in-house suspension for you. I hope that things have calmed down between you and your ex-wife. That's sure. all I have. That's fair. All right. Uh, Cass, let's take mm-hmm. a brief break. I'm Luce Tomlin Brenner, and I've seen all the films. And I'm Cozy Orlin, and I've seen a bunch of weird movies that I love. And together, we host You Need to See This, a film podcast about filling in the gaps of our collective cinematic experience. We're comedians, writers, filmmakers, and film lovers. Each week, we pick a film at least one of us has seen, and at least one of us has never seen ever. We then try and convince each other and you that it's worth your time. Sure, we're a little pretentious, but we're not monsters. We're not friggin' monsters. We don't want to shame anyone for not seeing anything. We're inclusive. We want you to watch these films. We need you to see these. We'll cover everything from lesser known art house indies to how did you miss this blockbusters? And we do it all with no spoilers. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever fine podcasts exist. So come join us every week for You Need to See This. You really do need to see this. And we're back. Hello. Hello. 
What did you do on the break? Oh, I listened to our wonderful sponsor and I listened to an advertisement from a new podcast that we would like to promote. Cool. Yeah, I like what, that. What'd you do? I kind of just sat here and stared at the wall until you came back. Fair enough. So according to Newsweek... Dot com, 86% of teachers said that they have to buy their own PPE for in-person classes. And a poll released on Tuesday conducted by Heart Research Associates for the American Federation of Teachers found that 88% of teachers had purchased PPE. The poll indicated that 86% of the teachers bought the PPE for their own year- use, while 11% bought it for their students. This <laughs> sucks sad. This is just, our education system is garbage. I listened to uh, The Daily, which is the New York po- New York Times podcast, which um, I honestly think Trashy Trashy is a better place to get to get news than New York Times, but uh, New York Times is definitely a close second. They interviewed a woman who works in the New York public school system, which they have continued to push back the date of when they're going to do in-person classes. But the lack of preparation that is going into this is appalling it's it i saw something about it's like you we have to be nice to teachers right now because they're literally building the plane while they fly it yeah there was a viral clip that that went viral on tiktok and then it's made the rounds of a kindergarten teacher and the enthusiasm that she has to display and the the just god bless her just the charisma of her having to say like okay which fox has the red hair, raise your hand and unmute if you believe it's Fox A or Fox, you know, these are five-year-olds that are on Zoom calls with a teacher all day. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that there's no good answer other than please voting in November so that maybe someday we can return to having fans and stadiums to get punched like Germany gets to do, Mm -hmm. but at least give them masks. Yeah. Free masks. Give them PPE. I understand that like we're budget strapped, but that's why we have to fund education more. But why are we budget strapped, Erica? No, I got to save it for my more angry ranting podcast. Yeah. Be nice to teachers. That's all I have to say. Be nice to teachers. Speaking Um, of someone who's really fucking nice to teachers. Yep. Lori Laughlin, uh, notorious, notorious, I will bribe to get my child into USC, is uh, finally going to jail, but uh, not for long. Two months. And not far away. No, her um, her jail is in uh, Riverside, California, right? No, be- excuse me, Victorville. 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 It's a federal correction institution in Victorville. It's the closest to her home. She will be in a low security prison that houses 300 inmates and comes with quite a Hollywood pedigree. According to Vanity Fair, Dance Mom star Abby Lee Miller, who was released earlier, served her sentence there, and the facility was used as a set for the um, first episode of HBO's Luck. Sweet. Which I was an extra on. Really? Yes. I worked on Luck. Okay. Several days at the Santa Anita horse race facility. And I had breakfast with Dustin Hoffman. Oh, oops. Oops. (laughs) Why, we're Um, both trash. Yeah. Her, uh, Lori Laughlin's husband is also getting five months in prison. And, uh, you know, I have, why didn't William H. Macy get uh, arrested and only uh, Felicity Huffman did, by the way? Do we know? Uh, I don't know. Did he know about it? How do you not fucking know? I don't know. I'm not defending William H. Macy. I'm just saying, I just, I, was he aware of the crime? I mean, you probably might be aware. I don't know. Who knows? You're right. You're right. Whatever. I'm not going to, I can't speculate. I think he knew. I don't know how you don't know, but whatever. Victorville, if I'm remembering correctly, is on the way to Vegas. So definitely passed through there before. I think it smells like cows. Yeah, that sounds absolutely accurate. But like, yeah, like I'm pretty sure that like when you open the door there, you are just shocked with like cow smell. Yeah. So like, that's good. I mean, they want to stagger their print and their prison sentences so that they don't have so that they don't overlap and leave the girls on their own their children but aren't these girls over 18 at least olivia jade is and like rich and like rich and take college and also who gets to dictate when they go to prison 
it's such a bullshit bias system that we're letting the rich have a different justice system than the rest of the world. Yeah. Aunt Becky gets to dictate when she'll go in and where. I it just I'm beyond pissed off about the fact that mothers who use their, you know, somebody else's address so that their kids could go to a better school <gasps> are in prison today. Yeah. And yet they bribed officials for college and they're serving five months, two months. With whenever they want. Service. Whenever they want, wherever they want. We live in two different worlds. It's pretty bad. It is pretty fucking bad. I would argue three. Um, but, uh, you know, in high school, I used to compete in D-Task competitions. That's the Drama, Drama Teachers Association of Southern California uh, competitions. And the town next to Victorville is called Hesperia. And Hesperia used to whoop everyone's asses in these fucking drama competitions you there are some creative people over in hesperia and they were like the big our biggest rivals like i used to win second place all the time maybe third but never first hesperia also always just first place like and i think we had to go there shit we had to drive to detask once and I was one someone who already had a car and I was in a scene with a guy that I had a crush on. So I was like very much like, would you like me to drive us to detask? Uh-huh. He's like, yeah. That I I remember that's how I know about the cow smell is I just remember getting out and like I just had like this great like, you know, hour and a half, two hour drive with like this guy that I thought was so cute. Uh spoiler alert, we never got together. And we get there and just open the doors and just just cow. I mean, I grew up in that environment, so it it, it Am I probably, insulting you? No. You just get used to it. <laughs> like That's I what up- I imagine. It's like because this was like an outdoor I mean a lot of the a lot of schools in California because we of our weather, we just like they're outdoor schools. And so like they must just get used to it. Why do you volunteer to host D task if that's how stinky your school is? They're proud of it. They're making of agriculture. They're making your food. I know. I should really shut the fuck up. That's really the motto of Trashy Trashy Podcast is when you and I have moments where we realize, you know, we should probably just shut up. But that makes us the right people to host it. And speaking of people that won't shut up. According to TMZ.com, I have a question about your about your segue. Are we referring to Carol Baskin or are we referring to Don Lewis's family when you're talking about people who just won't shut up? Don Lewis's family. Okay, wonderful. So according to TMZ.com, Carol Baskin was told minutes before she was supposed to perform on Dancing with the Stars that there is going to be a commercial that is going to air from Don Lewis's family begging for tips about the disappearance and death of their father. Did you watch the commercial? I did. It's heartbreaking. I was, is it? I was I was dying of laughter. Oh, <laughs> I was sad. <laughs> yeah, look. I'm not an asshole. I think it is very sad that there is a man who is dead and this is his actual family who misses him very much. But like, (laughs) these people did interviews on Tiger King, okay? Like, you knew what you were getting into when you were like, yeah, I'll be on a documentary about fucking joe exotic and the and carol baskin and the tigers and the way that this i mean it's produced like good bad i guess where it looks like it's a sketch like these people all look like they're in a sketch yeah it does have like like you said like good bad tendencies where high brow production but low brow qual like quant quality in that it's like this young this youngish like white lawyer like male lawyer surrounded by these four very severe looking women begging for tips on don lewis's disappearance and not only that but if you think carol baskin was involved i'm like dude fuck fuck you like it's just so it's very funny and it's very it's it's like whoever was in charge of advertising at abc who like found out they're like hey by the way like the Lewis family wants to air this. They were like, oh, I'm going to get a raise. Yes. A hundred percent. I mean, I watched Carol's dance. Did I you? watched the commercial and that is more of dancing with the stars than I've ever seen in my life. You know what? This is a perfect time for us to just segue to our dumpster fire of the week. <laughs> Do 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 do. Shh. 
dumpster fire of the week. So our dumpster fire of the week is less of an article and more of a concept. The concept is, the fuck Dancing with the Stars? What the fuck? <laughs> like, what? you, Dancing with, the far, Dancing with the Stars, are our dumpster fire of the week. This show, I understand it brings joy to a lot of people, and it has brought joy to me sometimes. I used to watch it with my mom. But, like, who the fuck is casting this? <laughs> And and the word star is a very very loose oh yeah, yeah. term. Do, would we call these people stars? But like some some of them make sense. Yes, get a, a former athlete on there. Get like you know maybe like a singer. I know that you're not going to get a list celebrities for this shit. So like fine. And I also know that sometimes these types of reality shows help repair an image. We need to cut off the line on who we want whose image deserves to be repaired because let's say that you're who's a good example of someone that doesn't bother me uh (laughs) here's a good example of my opinion only brandy brandy okay i don't know if she needed image repairing or if she just wanted to be like a little bit famous again either way she is a great person for dancing with the stars you know she not a great person bristol palin yeah. Daughter like, of former Republican vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin. And certified crazy lady. Now, Bristol Palin, was that one the one who got pregnant? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, she and and she got pretty far. And that was like a big, like, Republican conspiracy that, like, her mom's supporters were the one that were voting her through. It's like, that's the another reason why I don't fucking like these types of shows is because when America gets a choice to vote people through, then like, what are we even doing here? Yeah, you're, it should be judged by the judges, not America's vote. Yes, of course. Okay. I watched American Idol. I watched the first season. I mean, I watched plenty of seasons of American Idol growing up, but like, I watched the first one with like Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, and uh, the country singer. And I, they had like this really awesome, diverse top 10 of like, they had like a couple country stars. They had like kind of like a weird indie girl. They had like these big voice, like, you know, like people of color. They had someone who was gay and who did drag. Like it, it was incredible. And then the second, the second that America got involved, all the white people were doing great. And all of these people of color and these gay people were like getting eliminated. And the judges get like one save here and there. So like this, the one who specifically who did, um, he was sometimes singing as himself and sometimes he would sing uh, in drag. And he was by far the most talented singer. And also, by the way, if I'm getting the pronouns wrong by saying he, I'm sorry. But it was like the by and large the best singer. And Katy Perry had to keep or they they had to keep saving him. And the judges were pleading on on television being like, America, you're you're making a mistake. You need to look at the talent here. Like literally, like that was happening. And I was and I stopped watching. So I was like, fuck this. And I voted too. I was trying, but like, if America's just gonna vote for the country people, and like the the girl who won was like this little weird like blonde indie girl who, like, fine, you did it, but like, oh my god! So Dancing with the Stars is the same shit. It's we have the image of Tucker Carlson, Mike the Situation from Jersey Shore, Gerard Geraldo Rivera, <laughs> Kate. It's Gosselin. okay. He sucks. You don't need to know how to say his name. Uh, David Hasselhoff has been a, a participant. Again, the use of the word star is real loose goose to me. Yeah. I, I, and I was talking over you, but Kate Gosselin was another one that she listed, who I believe was the originator of the Karen haircut. Oh, 100%. The OG Karen. Yeah. So, oh, Sean Spicer, former White House press secretary, that was a huge controversy when he was cast. Yeah, that was bad. I mean, even the show's hosts at the time, Tom, Ber- Tom Bergeron and Aaron Andrews, I know that Tom definitely tweeted something about Sean Spicer, but like, that's another one where it's like, I think he's the worst example of all. I don't like that Carol Baskin is on there, just like for real, but like, I think Sean Spicer is the worst example because he is like someone who is like the living incarnation of like Matt Walsh's character on Veep Mm -hmm. of just like this idiotic press secretary. The only fucking reason, only reason that people have any sort of likability towards him at all is because of Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. Playing him on SNL. Yeah. Her impression. And so it's just like, why? Why the fuck? Why him? He's a fucking liar. He's a liar. He's been proven a liar. 
he was defending this lying monstrous president that like no matter how you feel about donald trump sean spicer was still a fucking liar Mm -hmm. it's his job to lie i mean no i mean yes his job specifically working for the trump administration is to lie i would like to hope that someday the press secretary's job is not to lie and it's just to say what we need to know yeah but with this call me the eternal optimist yeah i I understand. Yeah. So I, um, uh, we've got, so we, it's all started with Carol Baskin and that, that this even came up, but it's just like, do we need to give this like woman who is like possibly a murderer who's very like, you know, gas on gas on a fire kind of person? Do they really need to be on Dancing with the Stars? No, I don't think the show should exist. <laughs> like, sorry At to all? all the fans. Yeah. I, I just think it does like a bad track record and I think it's run its 28, 29, 30 seasons, whatever it is. I mean, it's getting like a, it's getting a whole new revamp now because Tyra Banks is the host and you know, it's, it's just like a, this show, it's just begun now. Um, I'm looking at the rest of the the cast. It looks like they have Monica from cheer, right? Which they Um, originally had cast jerry from cheer but due to ongoing investigation he was replaced oh i didn't know that i knew about the second part i just didn't know that jerry was the original choice carol baskin caitlin bristow oh some bachelorette person okay we don't know we i don't know vernon davis uh, was a football player and hesh which is uh i think that's ellen's ex-wife or uh, ellen's ex-girlfriend who i'm pretty sure is confirmed to be a little cuckoo Okay. Or maybe that's just what my friends talk about in our group chat. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else that is even close to being as controversial. Oh, AJ from the Backstreet Boys. How dare you? Nelly. That's kind of cool. See, I mean, I can see the appeal. Like, I would probably... <laughs> the catfish guy? I would watch this. I th- <laughs> Maybe I'm fucking up. <laughs> we got a flip-flopper. I'm well. I know. I'm still talking shit. I still think that they're a dumpster fire. I don't like that they're high. That they're bringing Carol Baskin. I don't like that you're trying to revamp the image of someone who does not deserve it, like fucking Sean Spicer or mm-hmm. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson is my opinion. I think he's a bad person, but like, I, agree. I, I mean, you know, like whatever. Like we just Dancing with the Stars. Just get your fucking shit together. Mm-hmm. Go back to being a joyful show. I mean, was it ever joyful? <laughs> I. It was. I watched right. the first season. I have one more thing to say. Okay. Let it loose. For those of you listening at home, yes, when I discovered that Nellie was on the show, that is when I said I would watch this. Nellie being another person that I like to show my kids. This is the music I listen to. And for Nellie, no notes. No notes. Erica? Yes? What are you hoarding this week? I'm hoarding a show on Netflix called Call the Midwife. <laughs> oh, okay. It's set in the late 50s, early 60s in a poor neighborhood in London called Poplar. And it's about a group of women, primarily, who act as midwives for this poor neighborhood. But it deals with racism, abandoned babies, poverty, the national politics of London and Britain of the time. It's so cheesy and corny, but it makes me so happy and I, I cry almost every episode. And this isn't reality. This is scripted? Scripted television, yes. It's in its ninth season. New episodes just dropped. So get at me, call the midwife heads. I love it so much. I, it's cheesy. It's corny. But it, every episode, you know, a baby is born in some, you know, multiple babies. <laughs> and this is somebody who is terrified of birth, but I love it. It's like uh, how Grey's Anatomy, like someone always dies, you know, like maybe not a, a main cast member, but like they, there's always a patient introduced early on in the episode who will ultimately die. It's like that's their thing is that there's always a baby born. Mm-hmm. It's lovely. You and I have uh, significantly different Netflix algorithms because week after week you recommend things that I have truly never fucking heard of. <laughs> well, what are you hoarding this week? Um, I'm hoarding gambling. Oh, speak on it. So I was asked very last minute to be in uh, what is called a pick 'em league. I uh, I play fantasy football for the past couple years, and I'm not very good at it. And um, so I decided this year to not participate because I'm like, I'm not going to 
I'm not going to invest a bunch of time into doing fantasy, which I'm not good at. And also like someone could like get COVID and then I'm just like, fuck my sports heads know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, someone did say, Hey, would you like to be part of a pick em league? $25. And basically all I have to do every week is I have to pick which team is going to win which game this is i mean this is thrilling i'm really really liking it i've been reading like all kinds of articles and developing my own opinions about teams that i do not follow whatsoever where i'm just like i read the new york times predictions i read nfl's predictions i read cbs sports and then by the end of it i was just like (laughs) please these people are a bunch of kooks over here because like i'm just i'm getting so easily swayed one way or another about things that truly don't matter my update right now is that i so far have only gotten one game incorrect of the games that have been played damn i am fucking i don't know man this is like a kind of gambling that's very easy for me Mm -hmm. one or two one or two one or two one or two and it's like yes got it and uh you know if i win like it's pretty cool this league gives last place 25 dollars, which is nice and then first place and second place get cash prizes nice i i won my friday night poker game we play hold'em texas hold'em Hell yeah. And I came away the victor on Friday night. So I'm I'm all into gambling as well. You actually truly are. Because we went, when we were in Barcelona, we went to a casino for you. Yes. <laughs> I needed a fix. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I wish you all the best in your league. Thank you. Thank you. I will probably give updates on how I'm doing as the weeks go on. And we'll see if I still like it. If I start doing poorly, because I'll tell you what, I don't like to lose. I feel you. And you know who's never, you know what it's like to never lose? What? Rating and reviewing this podcast. You just can't. Oh, no, can't, no losers there. You just can't lose by giving us a review. It helps other people find the show. It helps us grow the show and find more listeners like you. Hey, Erica, happy 10th episode. Happy 10th episode. God damn, time's flying. Flying right by. Cass, where can people find you online? You can find me at Cass Cardenas on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find me every Tuesday night live on the Smodcast Network for the Nooner Podcast. And you can also get the Nooner Podcast potted on iTunes, Spotify, Stitch, probably wherever you can get podcasts. And we've been doing a radio play called Buzzsaw 2, this again, Miami Nights. We are premiering episode six this week. And if you want to listen to all the other episodes that we've done prior to this, I believe those are all on Nooner's Reddit page, which is Reddit R slash Nooner. I have no idea how fucking Reddit works. But if you know how Reddit works, then you 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 know what I'm talking about. Nooner, Nooner Podcast, not not just Nooner. Nooner Podcast. I think if you just type in Nooner, I don't really fucking know what happens, but I wouldn't trust it because it's Reddit. Where can people find you, Erica? I am at Iconic Erica Curry on Instagram, where I mostly post pictures of my cats these days. And but beautiful a, pictures of yourself. And bellissimo pictures of myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, doing the most. Doing the most on Instagram. You can find me at Gilly Gal on Twitter. And you can find this podcast at Trashy Trashy Pod on Instagram and Twitter. We have changed our handle to trashy yes. trashy pod yep we couldn't get trashy podcasts from the from those twitter monsters so trashy trashy pod that's us and we are better for it mm-hmm. hey cass mm-hmm. stay garbage Ugh, erica you you stay garbage girl bye bye, bye.